Hello, so welcome to this video for Comp 3218, Game Designer Development at the University of Southampton. My name is Dave Millard, I'm one of the lecturers of the course, and I'm here with... Uh, Johan Daniel Marino, one of the demonstrators. Brilliant, thanks Johan. So, um, for this coursework, we asked the students to create a narrative game that had a story engine, where the story affected the game, and the game affected the story. So we've got a, a couple to, to take a look at, so without further ado, let's get on with it. Okay, so our first game is The Very Busy Goat. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> oh boy, I'm sure I'm thirsty. So this is on rails, by the way. So jump into this well, my friend. The water is fine. So this is like a little <laughs> cutscene. It's Dudley the Donkey. <laughs> ah. Okay, all right. So I like that little start. So like I said, I was a, when it first came up, I was a little bit like, oh, am I going to fall in a hole? And I was kind of looking for the controls. But it's, uh, it's obviously like a, a kind of little cutscene thing, so that's quite cute. Um, let's c continue. You startled me. My apologies. A fine morning to you, my friend. My name is Dudley. I'm afraid that wasn't me who just called out to you. That was the wily fox. Looks like he's done a fine job of learning into this well. And only back is oh, uh, only way. Uh, only way back out is all the way at the bottom. I'm afraid. Okay, slightly counterintuitive, but <laughs> I'll run with that. That's where you'll find the fox. You look as though you'd have to have a few words with him. I can't blame you. You'd be a fool to trust him. He's always up to no good. All right, so it's good setting up the fox as our antagonist. I'm glad you're here. My good friend Gary, Gary the goat, has only gone and got himself stuck deeper below. If you were to take the left path and help him out, it'd be greatly appreciated and not soon forgotten. If you do look mighty thirsty, you've heard tell of mystical life-giving water somewhere in this well. Legend says makes whoever drinks it strong beyond measure, uh. if that's what you desire. Choice is yours. Whichever path you choose to take, I would give you the same piece of sage advice. Look before you leap. Okay. <laughs> you have unlocked view. Hold V when standing on golden ground to view the path ahead. It never hurts oh. to have a look. Ah, so that's interesting. So this was the mechanic that I was I was waiting to see. I think. Um, enter to skip. Okay. Hold V. Did it say when standing on golden ground? Mm -hmm. so it means like that presumably oh yeah look at that <laughs> oh wow all right so i can i can i can take a look so can i do anything else here space ah space is jump so space and v okay so do you remember which way was which it was well the left one i think was the other goat so we should we go and save the goat me yeah yeah, I mean, we could it. try, yeah. Let's do it. All right, let's save the goat. So we come down here. All right, so straight away we have a, a kind of... Um, the reason I said I was waiting to see this mechanic is that it, it seemed like one of the most obvious ways to do look before you leap... Oh, just realized there's a thing there. Um, would be to, to have a mechanic where you can literally look before you go somewhere. <laughs> um, yeah. There's a bug. I'm going to jump on it. I have no idea what that will do. Oh, what does that? Okay. Ah, okay. Ah, there's the goat we need to help. Hello, it's Gary the goat. Good morning to you. Did Dudley send you? Oh, that donkey is a saint and so are you. Thank you for coming to my aid. I say, you do look rather thirsty, sir. I wish I had a drop to give you, although one may find that shedding that water weight makes feel one quite light on their feet. Godspeed on your journey. Dudley won't forget your kindness in helping me. You've unlocked dash. Press shift to quickly dash ahead in midair. Dehydration never felt so good. <laughs> uh, okay. So presumably that's what I'm going to need to get over this. Um, so I can... Hang on. Oh, am I not pressing shift properly? Ah, there we go. Ah, there we are. All right, so I can jump over that like so. Okay. I mustn't forget that look before you leap thing. Ah, oh, how do you think I'm supposed to get through there? So can I... Can I dash maybe? Yeah, dash. Right. Yeah. Ah, so but I can't look. I can't look before I leap. Seems to be a missed mm. opportunity here, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Oh. Ah. So one of the things I quite am here. One of the things I quite like what they've done though is they've um they've remembered um the lessons from the tutorial coursework, right? And they're they're showing me stuff quite nicely actually. Um. As I go through. Ah, Studley, you made it. 
and you helped Gary find his way. I cannot express my gratitude. So I say it's a pleasure to meet a creature who cares for their fellow four-legged friends. I'm ashamed to burn you again, but another good friend. This is very careless of you to your friends. Help Bessie. My respect. She can be found on the left path. You begin to look positively dehydrated. Oh. So the only problem with this, I'm not sure what the water does. I've got these like, three apples above because I haven't hit anything. Um. So I, I think I'm okay still. So I'm going to go down here. Let's, let's have a look, shall we? Oh, my, my V. Oh, there we go. That looks odd. It's sort of occasionally working and occasionally not working. Am I just? Is it just taking too long? Uh, are you holding it down or? Huh. Do you think it's? Oh, I have to press and hold. Do you think? Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. They, they did say. Oh, interesting. Ah, so it says. I didn't realize that. Did I miss that when it came up to tell me to press and hold? Probably. <laughs> I, I think you did mention press and hold and okay so oh but now it's gone back to the there we go so there's mm. actually quite a few so, so it sort of gives me a preview of the whole level basically so there's a chicken there's a thing there's some other things oh i don't fancy going down that way okay let's go let's go uh, let's go this way <clears throat> so i'm not i'm not sure if i so previewing the whole level is is it feels too granular to me. I think it would have been nicer um, to have um, uh, kind of just just the, the next the next trap or the next thing, you know, and to yeah. play with that a bit more. It's Bessie the the bunny. Howdy, partner. Uh, I darn tootin' delighted you. <laughs> okay, I like the accent. You'll show me the way out of here. If I weren't so darn small, I'd hop and skip and jump around out of here, lickety split. I think Bessie the bunny's going to go in a pie, I think, if you're going to talk like that. I ain't mistaken, I reckon that Dudley has something to do with your jumping down here. Anyway, i got to say, partly you're looking a little worse for wear. You may just start floating away. Together, thank you, you're a real kind fella, see you soon. You have a lot leap! Hold spacebar to jump further. Okay. Oh, have I got like a... Ooh. Oh, oh, okay, okay. I still got dash as well. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Let's try a. Okay. So now I can do super long jumps now. <laughs> ah, and now that's. Uh... There we go. Oh, you got one apple. Oh, I, I got hit. That's interesting. Blimey. Oops. Oh, I, I can only dash once. Uh, uh, is it me or has this suddenly got substantially harder? <laughs> A bit, maybe. Oh, my life. Oh, I'm dead. Oh. Oh, and I'm resurrected, but. Ah, there we go. So a little glitch, I was floating in midair for a moment, but not too bad. Okay, I like the fact that they've, um, see, like here, like I'd like to take a look to what's going on. I like the fact mm. that they um, they put me back in the same place. I presume if this was a real game, they'd put me back to the checkpoint, but they're obviously yeah. mindful of the fact that... that <laughs> Probably, yeah. I, I might need some help with this. Um, let's go straight down. Oh, my life. Ow, 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 ow. And they're not wrong. I'm not hoping. Ah, oh, it's Dudley again. Dudley Lucky. You killed the Slug Queen. Sorry, I'm very grateful for helping Bessie. I appreciate that immensely, but the Slug Queen is dead. This is horrible. Did you have to jump on her head so many times? <laughs> <It's worth laughs> well, the slugs will die. I just need some time. Oh, dear. So perhaps I shouldn't have killed the slug? And the fox should be just below I've been informed that water be found to the right, and I stripped it for your own sake. You have already helped two of my friends more than enough. Be sure to go left and help Bruce. Out. Okay. I still don't feel a kind of sense of peril with this whole water thing, if I'm honest. Mm. What the earth is that? It's just <laughs> it spikes all the way down. Um, oh, this is going to work. There's some sort of wolf. 
That looks a bit easier that way. Mm, interesting. Maybe, uh, I'll be brave. I'm going to be brave. Let's go and help her. Let's be heroic. And talk to this enormous cow. Okay, you really are a bro. Oh, it's, uh, I don't know if you can tell, but I work out like a lot. <laughs> I, I quite like the characterization of these animals. It's quite good. And you kind of don't. <laughs> uh, look, bro, you're like, totally awesome for helping me from out of here, but you've got to take care of yourself. You'll know what to do. Have you met him? Uh, okay. <laughs> no joke. Okay. I got your back. A flight. But weigh nothing. Does mean nothing. Press space around midair to fly. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, I can, I can continually press fly. Huh, well. Ooh. Ow. <laughs> Oop. Alright, let's go for it. Oh, oh dear. Ow, ow, ow. Ow, ow. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And maybe if they had oh. a few invincibility frames. Let's see how we go. Mm. Crikey. I feel like I'm playing a, a, a lethal version of, of uh, Flappy Bird. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh. Okay, let's go through here. I'm sort of deep in concentration at this point. Um, should we start thinking about some of the? Oh, oh. Uh, should we some start of thinking about some of the market criteria? While I while I repeatedly fail to to make my way through this <laughs> spiky corridor, I don't think I can go back. Unfortunately. Um, what's uh, up first? Let's start with. Uh presentation and maybe the audio is there music there isn't um i'm not getting any music or sound effects at all actually um which is a bit of a shame because otherwise the presentation seems quite nice um yeah but yeah unfortunately that's that's entirely absent oh. absent yeah oh, that was mean um the graphics on the other hand um simple but effective i kind of quite like them I, there, there is a arguably there's a little bit of a difference between the characters and the background but that kind of is okay because they're sort of consistently different so all the characters yeah, yeah, are the exactly. same the backgrounds are the same and it makes the characters stand out from the backgrounds so yeah i, I think the the look of it's rather nice um so we do have consistent graphics Oh, don't forget you can dash as well, probably. Oh, yeah. Yeah, good point. It's hard, uh, as it is, if I'm honest. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so do you think the graphics are appealing as well? As um, consistent and effective? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I mean they're, they're straightforward, but they're... they're yeah, they're, they're, they're getting there, aren't they? They're kind of... They're, you can, they're very clean. You can see what's going on, right? I mean, I'm finding this challenging, but it's not challenging because I don't know what's happening. Oh, it's very hard to like. I think you're right. I think I need the dash. It's because when I when you jump, I jump to go forward, and it also takes you up. All right. Um, yeah. So I think I think I'd say the the graphics are appealing. I think they've done a, a nice job. So that's that's like the sort of good level. That's an excellent. excellent. They're appealing. Yeah, yeah. I think I think they are. Ugh. <laughs> Can't actually go back is the problem. Um, and bugs. I don't. Uh, no, uh, the information design now. Ah uh, yes. Um, so there's there's not an awful lot going on. There's two obvious things I guess, which are the apples, which are very clear. That kind of makes sense. Um, the other thing is the spikes that fall. So I was hoping to get to them, but then I died before I got there. Ah, yeah, um, they are not clearly. Well, they sort of are. So if you look at all these, they're 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 right next to each other, right? Mm. So these spikes don't move. 
and the spikes that do have a gap oh, between them. Yeah. Um, so it is sort of possible. It's very subtle, though. I, I, I maybe would have liked to... Oh, God. I maybe would have liked to have a... Um, yeah, a difference. A, a, it's a bit more obvious, but... But, um, yeah, I... There's not an awful lot of information to convey. Uh, so... I'm trying to think if there's anything else. So I guess I, I guess I don't really have a sense of my progress. That might There's be also thing. the golden uh, part where you can stand on. Ah, you're right. You're right. And there's I guess nobody told you necessarily that you can jump on. Uh, well, that looks hard. There we go. Yeah, so nobody told you that you can jump on enemies, but it no, was, I think, kind of implied with the game design. Yeah. Yeah, two. it was. Yeah. Oh, two weeks. Oh, Part no. One. Ask the fox. Oh, you sorry fool. Ooh. Yeah, hello. You've fallen for my ruse. I've been stuck down here for too long. Okay. And you shall facilitate my escape. Your foolish altruism has left you too weak to fight me off. <laughs> Mwahahaha. See you around, I doubt. Okay. Oh. Oh. Is he going to gone. float? Oh. Oh, he's all our friends. Oh no, our hero. Worry not, your kindness will not be in vain. We have collected plenty of water for you. Oh, see. And we can all get out of here together. We cannot thank you enough. We are at your service. Let's get out of here. And there we go. Oh, I think that might be it. Mm. Maybe a, the end would have been a useful thing to put, but there you go. All right, I will. Uh, I will come out, go back in, and we'll try and take a different route. And we'll see what happens. Okay, so in the meantime, yeah, so information design. Yeah, so uh, so information design, I think, um, I, I think kind of most of the key information is shown, definitely. Yeah. All key information. So I think the problem is, is that all the key information is shown. It's just there's not a lot of key information. Um, yeah. And you, 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 could, you could be finicky and say, look, there's... So the progress perhaps isn't there. The, the, the powers that you have are not necessarily represented. You're just told about them, but it's 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 kind of there. Um, I would actually say that most of what's there is shown relatively clearly, which is the excellent level. But because of the because of the scarcity of it, I would say it's good rather than excellent. Yeah. Right. I'm going to go the other way now. Go the other route. Yeah. Oh. So we can then go to meaningful play and look at bugs, maybe. Yeah. So. Um, Anything uh, so, major? Yeah. So bugs, I I don't think so. There's a, there's a thing where you respawn where you respawn sort of in midair. That's that's. Not hardly, really. A... Hardly anything really. Kind of yeah. mean to take them out. So I, I think I think the the game is reasonably complex, um, and there are no obvious bugs. I think. Ah, there's the water. Headbutt. Press E to perform a headbutt in front of you. That water really hit the spot. Ah. <laughs> well, I love his little angry face. <laughs> yeah. And and again, good. Um, there we go. Good. Um, Good tutorializing. I have to use headbutt, and again, I have to use it to get through there. So that's good. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a nice way. Uh, so okay, bugs. Uh, um, what's next? We have. Oh, so ah, do I, controls? do I kill all these, or I don't have to? Um, the controls are are actually pretty good. They're they're quite responsive, and the other thing is they've done that nice thing where the um, collision box for the goat is slightly smaller than the goat. So the game's actually a little bit forgiving, um, which makes me feel like I can kind of just slip past stuff and 
Um, so I, I think the controls are, are pretty nice actually. The the only odd thing is that the um, the special powers are in kind of sort of arbitrary sort of places, right? Oh, yeah. Um, so that was in fact I can't even remember what it was. To, what was it to headbutt they get? Did they was that again? Was that a I can't even remember oh. the key now. Yeah. Because um, I've got I've got space to jump, enter uh, uh, shift is dash. I've got wazd um, left and right, uh, so it's not wazd, it's ad, ad or left right for left right, but w doesn't jump or up doesn't jump. So I've got my hands in sort of is is lots of different places. So so that's my only problem with the controls is they're a bit spread around, but actually that it, it plays really pretty really nicely. Um, so I would say that that we kind of. Um, I think we're sort of at the good level, probably rather than excellent for controls, but but ah um, yeah. uh, because of the intuitive intuitiveness. Yeah, because like. it, cause it gets in, it, you know, they're in. Then they, they don't lie conveniently under one hand, basically. Um, mm. <clears throat> and mechanics seems kind of interesting. So we've got what mechanics have we got? We've actually, I mean, we we haven't probably seen them all. I'm guessing there's a whole new set down this side. Um, yeah, judging from the game notes, there are. So I'm gonna a keep. Few. I'm keep gonna go to the right hand side just to. Um, let's just let's just go for it. Oh, um, the dialogue was interesting. Yeah. So the other thing is the look ahead thing. I I don't think I need it. Um, I could do this game completely without it. See, hold tab. I mean, that's enough. <laughs> uh, what was it? Eve headbutt, wasn't it? I think it's only way now. Oh, yeah. E's headbutt. And that's tab. So I'm going to carry on jumping over these things. Because I don't. Oh, I've still, uh, yeah, they... oh, I've still got dash as well. I think. Wait. Is it the um... same thing? With tab, I mean. Yeah. So I've got this. I can jump and that. Oh, oh no. Didn't mean to do that. I can jump and do that. Ah. Uh, oh. Oh. Sad little goat. Yeah. The the dash and the. The dash and the charge are very similar. Oh. Mm, yeah. But uh, it's interesting though how they give you a choice here to yeah. kill or not kill them and it's quite clear actually um, yeah. did that come up in the dialogue I kind of wasn't paying attention he the donkey did say your mercifulness towards the other books something something okay perhaps I should have listened more carefully oh nothing over there I presume that's not a look ahead was V uh, but on that note, you did say that looking ahead at the start doesn't really help you. No. But no. Uh, in a sense, at least a bit at the start where you were looking at the two paths and you saw one very hard and you were like, oh, I'd rather not do that. Yeah, so I it mean, did I, I... kind of work. I mean, yeah, I take your point. Oh. Really? I take your point, but I, I, not really, right? I what I saw, you're right. At that one point, I saw millions of spikes, and I was like, "Oh, I don't want to do that." Oh, I can keep it pressed down. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry about that. Oh, yeah, I can. I see, and again, I'm kind of. So I didn't realize that I can. I can keep the charge pressed down, and I keep on charging. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, you again. All right. I really thought you'd help young Charles after the drink you'd acquired, but it just wasn't enough you, was it? You want even more. I trust you had your fill. You certainly caused some destruction. Maybe this newfound power is getting to your head. Uh, oh, we spared the bug queen. Got another one of my friends has got some trouble down the left path. I must beg you. No, I'm sorry. Oh. Okay. I like the way that the, the dialogue is re responding to what I'm saying, that's that's good. So let's go down here. 
Um, yeah, in this case, you don't really... Yeah, okay, I see what you mean by looking before you leave, because in this case, you already... Oh. <laughs> okay. Like, you already want to be on the right side, so you don't need to... Okay. So look before you leave. So, so that caused me a problem because... Ah, they gave me different arrows, but now I'm getting it, so they're taking it up. Oh my gosh. Ah! I landed on the fox. <laughs> killed him, by the looks of it. My god, the fox! Oh, sorry. You killed him on impact. So I wonder if I'd have... You truly are a monster. So, what if I'd have... so maybe if I go left, left, right next time, and then see what happens. Um, I don't even want to look at you. I need time to think about what you've done. <laughs> Little jump. I'm too heavy. Oh, I see. I can't jump out the well because I'm too heavy because I've drunk all the water. Yeah. And all I can do is stare up at the sky, presumably. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's uh, let's go through again. I'm going to try going left, left, Le right, and see if uh, that does anything. Yeah. And why are we doing that? So where were we? We on mechanics? Mechanics, yeah. And you were talking about the look before you leave thing. Yeah. So, so I think, um, so I, I, I'm, I'm not sure about the look before you leave thing. It feels a bit superfluous, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now but, that you. But, but they actually, there is still a, a good set of mechanics actually, right? I've got jumping. I've got dashing. I've got ramming. I've got um, charging. Um, floating. I've got, I've got floating. So there's a lot of stuff going on, right? Um, and the design of the levels does change to allow me to take advantage of those things, and it, it gives you know. So I, I quite like that. So actually, I would say that we we do still have a wide set of complementary mechanics, right? It's just that one of them is a bit superfluous, and I guess we might get back to that when we get to the poetics aspect. Yeah, yeah. Um, and go from there. But I think that that's it for meaningful play, isn't it? So we can sort of perhaps start talking about the story the story engine um so we're looking for two things right we want the story engine the story to affect the game world and the game world to affect the story so the the story definitely uh, sorry the the game world definitely affects the story because depending on what i do i get different dialogue and i also get a different yeah. ending um the game world affecting the story I guess the main way of doing that is through the um, the diegetic choice. So I, I literally make a choice of whether to go left or right. Yeah. So I yeah. think I was going to go left, left, right. So let's go down here. Um, is there any other ways in which it affects it though? Is there any? Uh, oh, uh, actually, yes. The the bugs. Sparing. Yeah. Sparing the bugs. You're quite right. Um, and that you know gives you a different dialogue. Different dialogue. So there's definitely two ways. So I think um, you know a good uh, a good would be a number of examples where the gameplay impacts the story in important ways, um, and a, a satisfactory would be sort of some examples where the game world impacts the story. Um, I I think we're it, definitely. Is, I think it's a good, isn't it? We've got kind of. Um, I mean, excellent would be a kind of a consistent interplay between the game world and the story. So that means constantly going backwards and forwards between the two. Mm. Um, we kind of get that because we've got these stages with the goat in the middle and we kind of get interplay. Uh, it kind of implies that I do something and then it impacts the story and then that story then impacts me again. So there's kind of like a cycle going on. And there kind of is because I'm, you know, it's, because I'm being, it's being commented on what I'm doing, right? So mm, in the, yeah. it's encouraging me to do different things as a result. Um, so I'm, I'm always tempted to say that, that actually they for both for both the story engine, uh, were, you know, game to story and story to game, they're, they're both kind of at least towards the excellent level. What do you think? Mm. Oops, sorry, I've got my dash. How do I dash? Well, oh, shift. Yeah, well, yeah. for the game world to story, yeah, it's there are quite a few examples of that story to game world. Yeah, that 
it's also I suppose I said it, it's the interplay right so excellent says there's a, cons a constant yeah. consistent interplay between the two and there kind of is like here I've been commented on he said thank you for going left but you might want to go go right yeah so um, yeah if yeah if I'm, you had done done the yeah. other way it would be a different dialogue so yeah um, there is quite a... so I, I I think for both of those we're on the the excellent level I think they've done a nice job Oh, I've forgotten what my special power was from that one. Uh, it was jumping. Is that a long jump? Longer. Isn't it? Yeah. That was it. Uh, so let's see. Uh, next one, next criteria would be the agency. Uh, um, and the richness of structure and quality of choices. Um. <laughs> Yeah, so what we're looking for here is is how many branching points there are and whether we've got genuine choices. Um, the branching points effectively, they're, they're, they're all diegetic, which is quite cute. So they're, they're going left or right three times. And also I have the choice about what to do about the bugs, right? Do I yeah. kill them? So I, and, and I've got them there. And that's a kind of cumulative thing, I'm guessing. So, so I definitely think we've got at least some branching points. Um, we've definitely we, we've probably got several branching points actually, and they are throughout the game, right? Um, yeah, definitely, at least. Yeah. I, I mean, in all, all in all, it's one, two, three, four branching points. I think, like official, oh. where you choose to go left and right, and then yeah. small branching if you kill or not kill the bugs. Yeah. Oops. So, would that constitute us several? I mean, it does sound... I think it does. I, I think kind of... Um... I mean, it's enough, I think, for a coursework in a sense. Yeah, I think so. I think I'm, I'm happy to go for the, the higher one there. And is it a number of branching points throughout the game? So it yeah. definitely is throughout the game. I, th I think so. Yeah, I, th I think agents. I think the richness of structure is is probably at the excellent level. Um, the quality of choices is kind of interesting. So this is about um, do I actually have agency? Are they interesting choices? Am I making informed decisions? Are they calculations or or not? Um, so. Part of the problem here is I don't really know what I'm doing on the first run through. So on mm. the second run, I understand um, that that what I'm tr what I'm basically doing is I'm making a choice where I get different powers, right? Um, one where I get I get sort of aggressive powers, and one where I get sort of exploratory powers. And I'm also um, kind of you know I understand the kind of narrative impact I'm having. But otherwise, it's a bit weird, you know. I've been told about I need water, um, so I, I I don't know. I'm I think I, I I like the game quite a lot actually, but I I think that bit is probably the bit that works the least well. Mm, yeah, it, it feels like if they so now go to the right, right? Yeah. I I think the fox was there. So, so yeah, yeah. It, I I was saying that if they maybe had. Uh, made it so that if you go to the left and don't drink water, your screen fades a bit, or uh, you know, the fact that you're getting de de dehydrated becomes more obvious. Yeah. Oh, is that the other? Is that another? Oh, yeah, donkey's up there, look. <laughs> that's uh, okay, that's kind of interesting. So, um yeah, I, so for me, I think it's more that it doesn't kind of happen naturally in the game, right? So so the water thing is totally separate from all of my powers in the game. It's divorced from it. Yeah? So, yeah, yeah? so if I come this way, I gain attack powers. So if there was a if there was a big fight with the fox and I needed those attack powers to win, yeah? God, I forgot yeah. I've got now. I've got a headbutt, and I've got long jump, and I've got dash. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so um, if I needed those powers to beat the fox, that would be one thing, right? 
but that's not that's not how it works there's this entirely separate mechanism yeah and and, and that's why i think there's a there's a problem ah we finally meet let's see what happens now you have played uh, so this time i haven't fallen on the fox and killed them i'm i'm, I'm actually <laughs> so perhaps this is ah here we go perhaps this is where i do get to fight the fox Place your four feet on bend your head. I will run up your back, help you out afterwards. Not buying it, huh? Okay. Oh, bit of false, bit of uh, false agency. No matter uh -huh. whether you wish to or not. Oh. <laughs> oh dear. Oi, come here. What am I supposed to do with this thing? Uh, jump. jump on him? No, if I jump on him, it kind of. It's kind of a bit strange. I've got my kind of head back, mm -hmm. but it doesn't seem to work. Huh. Okay, I'm a bit lost at this point. Uh. It, it feels like maybe. Oh. I don't know if it's ah. possible, but. I was damaging oh. the fox. Okay, you win. I just didn't know I was damaging the fox. Mm, That's a yeah. bit problematic. Right. Yeah. Um, but this is a much more natural... So here we go. So I'm using the powers I've got, the, the little bit of aggression to beat the fox. So this feels like it's better integrated um, in terms of the choices. Um, so I, I think in terms of the quality of choices, so uh, what would we have? We would say that say good would be interesting choices or some interesting choices and attempts to manage player agency. I think I do have that, right? They, they are managing my agency. They're coping with what I'm doing, right? And they're, they're making key decisions. They're, they're making those in the, in the, the cut scenes. Um, and there are some interesting choices, right? I quite like this whole thing about, do I, do I power up or do I save the friends? Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, but it doesn't maybe it doesn't quite feel like it's into the excellent category. It feels like maybe I'm, I'm not I'm not getting enough feedback about the friends right to make it feel like I miss it that I should have helped them in some way. It all feels like it's a bit divorced from reality. Oh, I can kill the fox or spare. Oh, oh okay. This is the first time I think I've had a choice that wasn't done in game. That's interesting. Interesting, yeah. And I wonder why they decided to do that and not just let me headbutt the fox. Um, should we spare him? Let's spare yeah, him. try try to spare him. There we go. I'll spare you, Fox. On one condition. My condition is this. Oh, there we go. Can you help me find more water? I'll help you not to fall into any more wells. Okay. Do we have a deal? <laughs> so now I have a Fox <laughs> servant. I'm so happy to still be kicking. <laughs> Ah, oh, they, they sure am thirsty. They walk off into the distance. Very nice. So, yeah, I, I would say that, that there are some interesting choices. Um, uh, and, and uh, yeah, some, some attempts. So I, I, I think that's a good. I think quality of choices is a good. Right. Mm -hmm, yeah. Right. I, I, I'll try doing perhaps the other way now. See if, it, uh, see if I get anything different. Um, but while I'm doing that, we should finish up. So now we're on to the kind of design elements, the poetics. The poetics. Mm, so yeah. this is to do with whether the narrative and gameplay complement each other or not. So the story is is all about kind of trusting, looking before you're leaping, doing that kind of stuff. Oops, get rid of that. Um, there we go. Um, you've obviously got the look ahead mechanic. The look ahead mechanic, I think, is their attempt to bring that directly into the game, and I I just don't think it works. I don't think it's a really nice it, idea, it but they don't. The, the the level design doesn't use it, right? Yeah, exactly. They don't use it enough. Yeah. Um. So there's also a little bit where you're falling, and you've got the arrows telling you which way to go left or right. So that that also kind of works, right? In a sense. Um. But so I I, I appreciate what they're trying to do, but it doesn't quite quite work. Um. But otherwise. There's this whole thing about trust and about um, 
you know, whether you trust the animals. I mean, and that's kind of integral to the game. It's kind of it feels it feels like it's a game about trust and about sort of thinking ahead. So I think they've been kind of partially successful on this. Um, so, I mean, a, a satisfactory would be that the narrative and the gameplay don't interfere with one another. And I don't think they do. I think they, they, they actually sit quite nicely with one another. So good would be that they complement one another. And I think that's true. Do they support one another? Do the mechanics emphasise the themes of the story? Mm. It's kind of getting there. I just don't think they're yeah. fully successful. Maybe halfway between good and excellent? Yeah, I was going to say something like that. Just that. Um, <clears throat> I, I I really appreciate what they've tried to do, though. Um, okay. So, what do you think about the pacing? So, I the fact that it's in three stages kind of works. Um, the first playthrough, it did get a lot harder, right? So, it got a lot more challenging. Um, I mean, there's more kind of going. There's more going in. Thank you, Windows. It's really useful. Um, there's, there's, oh, where's the headbutt? So there's, there's more going on on these levels, but they don't necessarily feel. Oops. Oh, I think we might have a bug because I'm inside the wall now. Oh. <laughs> uh, ah, that's the first bug. Can you headbutt out? Dash. Try to put the. If I kill myself on a bug, maybe. Yeah. Huh. Oh, I think I can. Right over here. Ah, uh, you could <laughs> jump out of the. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Just speed run it. <laughs> okay. Well, while, while I'm exploring this. Uh... <laughs> oh, oh, there's an it's a exciting barrier there that I'm not supposed to be on. Can I get out the end? No. Oh, now I'm just trapped in a wall. Oh, this is a horrible end for the goat. I don't like this branch of the story. <laughs> oh, hang on, I'll get down. No, I can't. Not enough. Can't get out. All right, imprisoned forever in the walls of a well. <laughs> not, yeah. Not, not good. The bad ending. The bad ending. Absolutely. Um, right. Hang on a second. So we, so we do have ascending pacing. You know, it gets harder. Yeah, I, I think I think we do. We we think that um that clearly. Yeah. Do clearly. we have a clear final peak? Um. Yes and no, right? Because we've got um. We've got the confrontation with the fox, so I think I think there's a, a clear narrative final peak. Mm. And on certain of the routes you get a game peak because they know I was fighting the fox, right? But on other routes, they kind of take that away from you. I mean, that is one of the problems is that you you, you, you want to have a, a dramatic finale down every possible avenue, right? Um, in a sense. So you could argue that that's a failure of the structure. So, But, but I think, you know, I think in general, they've got ascending pacing with a, a clear final peak. Um, I don't think that they've got more than one peak necessarily they've got the well they've got the kind of they've, they've got the kind of segmented sections but there's there's nothing that kind of that feels like it's building especially mm. um but maybe because of that we will we'll, we'll say it rests on a on a good for pacing um yeah it so okay, uh, what's the next one? Techniques. Uh, I think here they've done quite a good job. Yeah, they have, haven't they? So we've got. There's quite a few. So we've got the the, the dialogue comes up. Um, um, it would have been nice, I think, to do a bit more in the way of environmental storytelling, possibly. But I can understand. You know, they've they've got plenty of other stuff, so I can understand why they didn't. Um, Mm, yeah. Um, so uh, and the and the cutscenes are very nice. Yeah, cutscenes. That's um, uh... uh And they're sort of little scripted scenes within the uh, within the thing. So I so I think they've they've got dialogue and they've got cutscenes. So that that takes them to the um, uh, use of more than one writing technique. Is it appropriate and consistent use? Well, they they definitely go back and forth between them. 
and they're used for very different things, right? So, um, the dialogue itself is also really nice, or at yeah, least nicely, you know, nicely written and they're nicely characterized, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, I, I I think I would say they're excellent for their techniques. I think they told the story really nicely. Charge, okay. Yeah, uh, and I guess that leads us to feedback. Uh, let me check what they've said. Oh. Oh, yeah. uh, go. Teach all these stupid bugs a lesson. <laughs> I mean, I think uh, I so can charge through pretty much the entire level. Yeah. In a sense. Oh. Oh, are you going to? Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, she survived. <laughs> now, are you going to go back? Yeah, I'm not having that. Come on, let's do this. There we go. All right. Uh, yeah. So you have to go out of your your way to. Yeah, you really do. There we go. Whoa. Feeling strong, powerful. Me suggesting you put your endowment. Okay, why don't you prove it? So now I'm going to go left and see what happens. Um, so okay, so what do they say for their um, feedback? Feedback. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, one of the first pieces of feedback we received was that the look before you leave team Oof. did not come through in the moment-to-moment -moment mechanics of the game. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this led to the insertion of golden patches on the floor that can be used in combination with a button press by a player to view the to view when they have a decision to make. Yeah. Uh, we believe that by introducing an ability to the player that allows them to scan upcoming levels before making a decision develops the look before you leave theme of our game from the game's moment to moment mechanics. Which, yeah, it does work. Fox, we met the fox again. Um, oh, that's interesting. Now you can also charge. Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha. That's better. I can actually see what I'm doing now. Uh, so the first feedback they received, they definitely did. Really? You know, it, it did help. Uh, but maybe not. Like it, it could have been implemented a bit. Yes. Better I, throughout the level. Yes. Rather than just the Ooh, beginning. Fox is floating off. <laughs> some little bugs. Uh, I'm going to kill the fox. Oh, my life. I, <laughs> I, 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 um, oh. All right. I think we're getting some bugs. <laughs> you killed him. Yes. Of course. That was your choice. That's what you wanted. Yeah. I'll tidy up your mess. Marvelous. Uh, did they have any other feedback? Oh, was that? Was uh, yeah, that yeah. So, uh, in addition, we also received f feedback that we should use more than just dialogue as a writing technique. Yeah. We addressed this by implementing various cutscenes. Yeah. One at okay. the beginning and one for each of the possible endings. Yeah. Uh, we think that the use of this additional technique has allowed us to tell the story that we want to tell with greater effectiveness than before. So, so they, that's definitely worked, right? So, I think, yeah. we, I think we've got two. One of which is at the satisfactory level. The changes were somewhat successful, and the other one where um, they they they've been made successfully. Um, uh, has has that second so, one has it been interpreted and addressed? I, I think it has been actually. So I would say we've got one at the satisfactory and one at the excellent. And there's also a smaller one. Let yeah. me just read it. Furthermore, we developed the previously mentioned changes in character dialogue depending yeah. on the smaller gameplay choices throughout the game's levels to further the impact of the game world on the narrative. Yeah. So, you know, killing the bugs or not killing the bugs affects the dialogue. And... Yeah, yeah, So which also worked. So, so I think between the two, I, I think we should give them a good for feedback. I think they've addressed the feedback well. Um, yeah. Yeah, very nice. Nice game, nicely integrated all the way through. Very cute. Um, shall we move on to our next one? Yeah. Okay, so our second game is called The Baron of Portswood. Um, 
which is a nice local reference. I like that. Oh, we have oh, some wow. music. Uh, the Baron of Portswood. I like it. Um, I might. Oh, as a sorry, I stopped it. Then we have a little bit of animation, and this is good. I'm just going to change the audio um, balance a little bit, um, just so we can. Okay, here we go. Yeah, very nice. Nice animation. Little flag waving. Let's go for it. You awake from your blissful slumber as you recollect your thoughts. You look at your surroundings. Oh, that was a thing to click. A rickety wooden bed, a bedside table, and four stone walls are dimly lit by a candle about to extinguish. You recognise this to be your bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> as you gaze through the small peephole of the outside world, you are left in awe at the rolling hills and sprawling forests of Portswood. Oh, those are the days. Now it's just student slums, as far as I can see. <laughs> um, for some strange reason, such a beautiful sight reminds you of your name. Uh, be Bob. Of course, your name is Bob. You silly old goose. You think to yourself, "Time to get on with your duties." Okay. So no instructions, but I'm guessing I can I click. Ah, I can move with Waz. So you know, bookkeeper. Why is there a bookkeeper outside? Why is there a bookkeeper outside my bedroom? Why do I live in a library? I'm confused. Hello, bookkeeper. Can I interact with anybody or do anything? Do you think? Click. Click on bookkeeper. Space. Enter. Shift. Right click. No. Uh, Alchemist. Farmer. Oh, E. There you go. You make it to your desk. So I live. I'm in this room with these four, three, four other people. Where do they sleep? Uh, is it just me? <laughs> Um, some sort of weird commune. You make it to your desk. Upon it is a half-empty bottle of wine, a sand timer, and a book. Uh, look at the book. Pick up the dusty leather-bound book. You remember the words uttered by your father the day he gave it to you. Oh, I keep trying to click. It's a bit annoying. I have to click on the arrow. It'd be nice just to click. Ah. Uh. My most beloved son. I give you the most important item a ruler can have: his personal diary. Oh, okay. So he's the king, presumably. Cherish it and protect it with your life is a record of your progress as a ruler. It details the food stores, the supply of gold, and the well-being of the population. Any of these traits should fail, fall empty. Be forced to surrender yourself. So keep a watchful eye. The bookkeeper stays up every night maintaining it. If she catches wind that the book is lost, she will hit you where the sun doesn't shine. Ah, okay. So we have a book. Food, gold, well-being. Okay. Do you think I can do anything to get off this screen? E, possibly? Oh, E. Hearing your father's voice again brings back the painful memory of his passing. Okay, I've got an arrow pointing down here, which doesn't work. Because we have to set one of these. I'll remember mm. him fondly. I miss father. If only he was still around to give me some guidance, you think to yourself. He entrusts me with his lands, I will make him proud. So that's kind of, I always think it's kind of interesting when you give people narrative choices which change the past. Right, because uh, we're so used to thinking about the past as being immutable. It's a really interesting kind of little um, little device. The other advisors in the room can tell you that your mind is wandering off to dark places. Go introduce yourself to them. Press E to interact. Okay, great. So let's go up. Oh, they've got little things on. So let's interact with the farmer. I up there, bud. Pleasure to be meeting you. My name is Ivor, and I'm but a humble wheat farmer. Got wheat fields that go out as far as I can see. I'll see to everyone here is fed. Just so make sure you sign off on my farming plans and everything will be alright. What would you have me do with this bag of berries? Bob got loads of them. Um, save the berries, I guess? It would be most sensible to store them away from when we need them, you respond. A smart one, I see. I shall put them in the food store. Food increased by one. Ah, oh, okay, there we go. Alright, so let's go and talk to the alchemist. Your lordship. It's the rats that are carrying it, you know. Most people don't know that. The Black Death, that's what they're calling it. It only take a few years for it to get to these parts. You should be worried. I'm oh. sure with a combination of lockdowns and vaccine mandates, everything <laughs> will be just fine. Yeah. The name's Lucian, by the way. I'm known as the Alchemist. I've made it to my life's work to discover cures for diseases. I do so by transforming base metals into silver and gold. Okay. So what should I do about the Black Death? Better look into it, I suppose. Yeah. Glad to know I'm not working with Amateur. I'll get it right seems mysterious but knowledgeable 
Now here's the bookkeeper. The most honourable Lord Baron Bob. Pleasure to be serving you, my lord. My most humble servant, Guinevere, keeper of books. It is my responsibility to maintain the lord's personal diary. Okay, there we go. Uh, when your decisions. I assume probably to the passing of your father. I served under his guard. Truly great man. Your inauguration ceremony. The people of Ports would love to see you. Will you be attending? Uh, yes. Why would yeah, I not that... attend my own inauguration? As you wish, your friends will mean a great deal to them, as it does to me. So, loyal and kind, okay. Um, so, can I come back to this? Is this, I have to come to the book to look at it, do I? So, ah, there we go. So I can see my gold and put everything else and then. All right, so I can go there to, to look at the book. I can talk to these people. Can I come down here? It's the treasurer. Treasurer. The treasurer is busy counting coins. Uh, give me a sec. Hello, the name is Milo. I'm the treasurer in these parts. I see that every last gold coin is accounted for. Keeping a watchful eye on your expenses. Great. After charge of the mitpre. <laughs> the treasurer looks like a squeal. No, wait, there's one thing. I noticed that you were going to spend a large sum of money on wine imports from France. Is that a great idea? Oh. Well, I mean, wine is great. But it seems more prudent to save the money, I guess. Let's do that. Out of the game. I'm relieved to hear that, Bob. <laughs> Gold increased by one. Impatient and petty. Go get some rest. Okay, so this is just a second room with all my advisors. Uh -huh. So, does so everything, do you think everything's going to happen in here? Uh, I think yes. Into the bed, and after a couple of toss and turns, you fall asleep. Zzz. Zzz. Yeah, okay. We begin to dream at an earlier point in time. Oh! Oh! Oh, here we go. Oh, that's quite fun. I like it. Flashback. Is it playable, do you think? It's going to be scripted. I've heard mm -hmm. whispers from the clergyman that you are feeling unwell. The rumors are true. I've been suffering a great deal these past few weeks. My days are numbered. I do not need your pity right now. What I need to do is listen. Okay. My lands will need to be ruled by my descendants when longer around. As such, I must come to a decision on who gets what. The first district is Portswood, a land rich in resources and natural beauty. Not to mention a, a nice selection of convenience stores and takeaways. Mm, Home yeah. to thousands of kind and delightful people. <laughs> the jewel of the South Father. <laughs> and the second is Shirley. Oh dear, a place that oh. <laughs> I speak freely is a dirty and really hellhole where dreams go to die. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. The people of Shelley are honest and hard working, as we've well known. Um, for anyone who's watching who doesn't know, these are both areas of Southampton. Um, I put myself forward to rule over Portswood. I have trained to prepare myself to rule over such a place, and I've always done right by you. I think we should choose Portswood. So, yeah. what do you think happens if we choose Shirley, given that it's called Baron of Portswood? I'm always tempted. Um, but hmm. yeah, it seems odd that I would. Why would I choose that and not anyway? Well, maybe have a look at that later because some of these choices are. I will take on Portswood. Seems the obvious one to do. Does not matter. I've already decided. Portswood, go to you, Bob. I trust you with honor and dignity. Ah, it doesn't matter. Okay. Your ailments with your head. Your judgment is. You should be grateful for giving anything. The decision is final. This is so unfair. Bob has always been your favorite. But it's okay. So we've got we've got an evil brother who rules Shirley. Is that mm, yeah, <laughs> something like that? It's a new day. So what does the bookkeeper want to do with us? Most fine, my dear. Most pleased to see you. Diary, my lord. Yes, yeah, that is wonderful. Press on today's news. The local potato farmers have requested your presence to help settle a hedgerow dispute. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'll settle the dispute. A lot of these decisions feel like there's one obvious answer, right? Yeah. Um, I, I'm not getting a sense of... I mean, of, of what... First of all, what might happen if I didn't, but also why I wouldn't, right? Um, oh. I made good progress on a cure. Shall I continue? 
it's not real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I see what they're doing here. <laughs> All right, so uh, so there's some some social commentary in this game as well. <laughs> Probably better work on a cure. Uh, I'm, I'm so tempted to go the other way. Uh, <laughs> very nice. Uh, well, I'm glad to be seeing you. It's, it's hard to be most fortunate. Good, that's kindly honest. I don't suppose you have a plan for this extra wheat. Save the wheat. Um. So again, why would I not though? Mm. So I, so there, there are bits of this I really like. I, I, I think the writing's great. I, I, I kind of um, the little cutscene was wonderful. But yeah, the, the choices are, are, are seem not sided to me. <laughs> it's not what it looks like. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all right, I always speak with you. This is a mistake. I've noticed a rather large sum of money invoiced under your name, my lord. Uh, that can't be right. It says here it's for a 20 foot gorilla. Is it some kind of joke? Oh, <laughs> uh, it can't be real, is it? Oh, this no, is some this is some double negatives here. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. Um, no, it isn't. <laughs> it isn't. Uh, <laughs> Wait, it's no, can be that can be real, can it? Yes, it cannot be. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah, yes. No, it is. I'm not entirely sure what I'm agreeing to here. Uh, I can say, no, it isn't real. It must be a mistake. Clear it from the records, you reply. That man yeah. is going to bankrupt us. I would increase my oh, wow. I get some rest. Should we start going through the... Um... Yeah, the mark scheme. The mark scheme. So, presentation. Um... Graphics wise, I mean, it's it looks... pretty nice actually, isn't it? I mean, it's um, really, a, really attractive game. Um, it's very consistent. All the information and the the UI elements look the same. Um, I feel like I'm too close to everything. I, mean, I like mm. pixel art as next as the as much as the next man, but this is this is proper pixely <laughs> pixel art, right? I mean, I'm, I, I I've actually had to sit back from my monitor <laughs> to, uh. to play the game. So, so I think maybe it's a little bit up close, but but yeah, otherwise really lovely. So I would say consistent, effective, and appealing graphics, which is excellent, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, music, I there's music going on. I've not noticed any sound effects though. Um, so I I think what we just have is is music. Uh huh. Which I think is just going to be satisfactory, which is a shame because the, the the music's pretty good. Satisfactory would be audio effects and music. Um, oh, so it would have to be, yeah, sorry, it would have to be a, a pass. So mm, audio effects yeah. or music. So that's a shame, because like I said, it is a good selection of music. And the information design, I think, is nice. You've got the, the date, you've got um, the little, uh, what else we've got, the, the um, exclamation marks that pop up above their heads. Uh, you've got the book that you can go to the to book, see the yeah. state of things. Um, I mean, you, you could argue about whether they ought to, they ought to make it a bit more obvious about what the consequences of your decisions were in terms of the changes. But I think that's a design choice. You know, you can either make that apparent or not. So I don't think that's a problem. So I think I think the information is perfectly clear. Um, so I would say. So all key information is shown, or most key information, well, or maybe. Again, there's, there's not. A, oh. Yeah, I, I would I would say sort of. Well, all the, all the information is shown. I think there's just again not that much inform not that much information to show. I, I would say all key information is shown because I mean you've got the you've got the information in the book as well. Um, I've just paused here because it says eleven years start to fly by. In this time, you continue to build a supply of food. You persist in returning a healthy backup of gold. And you learn to listen to the thoughts of your people and honor your agreements when everyone is happy. Name's large. It's naming district report bubonic symptoms. Oh dear. Eleven Ooh. years. That was a lot, a lot, wasn't it? Your brother is here to speak with you. Oh, okay. So can I speak to these guys without? Hmm. Oh, there we go. We've got a sound effect. Hmm. Ah. Hmm. They just go. Hmm. 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 Interesting. That's the only sound effect. So Did that. We, when do we have one? Ah, we have the book as well. All right, I apologise. There are some sound effects, but they're just quite sporadic. So, so there is 
So I, 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 I think we, yeah. So it's at least satisfactory. Um, I, I don't think there's enough of them to call them complimentary, but I think it's satisfactory for for all you. Yeah, yeah. Do you think there was a ah? Oh, there he is, brother. Let's have a chat to him. Hello, brother. It makes me so miserable to see you like this, so happy. Oh. I could have achieved much more, but no matter. Surely it's benefited a great deal from my rule. I have allowed my people to enjoy whatever they please. Oh, wow. Just slaving away with meet and greets in Portsmouth, I'm enjoying lavish lunches and wines imported from France. You inform yourself of this. They won't take it too kindly when they find out. My wife got the Black Death last week. Do you want to know how she suffered? A minor cough and a sore <laughs> head. <laughs> oh, <laughs> see, <well. laughs> yeah, see you never, brother. Okay. That's a bit strange. All right, so I have a pit. Have I run out of? Oh no, they've all kind of opened up again now. Let's go and talk to the farmer. Yep, bubble as well. Oh, I should have probably checked the book, shouldn't I? Buffet, I don't think you deserve it, don't you? Oh, it's festival. Okay. Uh. <clears throat> is that all go ahead with the festival? Well, the festival's in good place. We, so this is this is the first time I feel like I've actually got a choice, right? Mm, yeah. So yeah. It, it feels like it feels like the festival might might make people feel good about things, or I could get stuck in. I, shall we do the festival? I, I think yeah. That sounds like hard work. Let's just do the festival. You answer. Bit of a break at the moment. Food decreased by one. Right. What I probably should have done was check the state of the book. Ah. Uh. But yeah, oh there we go, yeah, we got plenty of stuff, look, we're fine. Yeah. So Ooh. Uh, Alchemist, you're right to be cautious about death. I've heard from many sources that the terrible disease have blasted its way through Europe. What do you have me do? Work on a cure, I think. Oh yeah, that's you work on it. But again, why would I yes, why would I do the other? Well, because it's just a cough. Didn't you hear the brother? Well, I suppose, yeah. Good afternoon, most honourable Lord Baron. I am grateful to see in good health. All this news of the Black Death has kept me up at night. Uh, anxious and unsure. Will you speak to your loyal subjects put their minds at rest? Yes. <laughs> what, so why would I not? I'll be okay. Hmm. Alright. And while I'm and having the treasure, some, I guess. Uh, I think, yeah, he's not got a thing above him. So, ah. let's go to bed. All this talk of Black Death would prevent anyone from resting easy. District reports will be left on its toes for the ne left on its toes in the next four years. While some died to the severity of Black Death, some died to its very existence. And while some died to existence, some would fear for their lives. If I would come to the stream to ports with you, Baron Bob, and you were ready. The Black Death dug its deadly claws into the south of England. Neighbouring towns and villages suffered the toll, famine, poverty, and worst of all, death. In the thousands. At least that was the story for most. But due to the hard work and foresight of Baron Bob, Portswood left unscathed. Hooray! <laughs> Thanks to the caution shown of the Baron, Lucian the Alchemist to be able to administer a cure to every inhabitant of Portswood, ensuring their safety and health. Okay. Um, e. It's your brother again. Oh. I like the way that they put that right outside your room, so you, you encounter it as soon as you come out. Mm. How's brother doing? Brother, I come to your time of great need, dear brother. I think back at the times I'd looked down and I realised that I was the foolish one. You were right about everything. Don't expect you to forgive me or help me. Please look into your heart and find a way to help the people of Shirley. You've suffered a great deal. Will you offer your support? Yeah, all right then. Uh, brother, yes, of course. See, again, why would I not? I... Oh, wow. Okay, for better or for worse. Lord Baron Bob the Cautious. And there we go. Huh, interesting. Cute. Um, Alright, I'm yeah. gonna go through now and I'm gonna be a I am gonna be a, a, a vaccine denier this time. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um I I'm still gonna, you know, look after the stuff, see what happens. While we're doing that, um Yeah, I'll uh, let's go through the meaningful play meaningful part. Play. Um any books? Uh, not so far, I don't think. Um, complexity. So what have I got? I've got? I mean, I've got the different UI elements, and I've got the kind of moving around, and I've got the book, and I've got the talking to people, but 
you know so i i think that counts as a reasonable complexity so I, 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 good scenes, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so I think bugs wise, I think it's excellent. There's no apparent bugs. We'll, we'll see if anything crops up as we go through some of the different routes. Um, I will be called Alice because I wonder if they've accounted for the fact that. <laughs> there you go. Of course, your name is Alice. Uh, you're still a goose. There you go. Um, yeah. uh, what about controls? It's uh, looks um, pretty yeah, simple, it's, but yeah, it's very simple. It's it's yeah, it's fine, really. I mean, it's kind of there's not a lawful lot, is there? There's the making these choices, but that's very clear. Um, yeah, so I would say it's a, a reasonable set of usable controls. Um, I, I kind of yeah. Yeah, are they on the smooth? It's difficult. There's not level. that many of them. Right. Yeah, um, exactly. The, the 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 one thing I would say makes it maybe not smooth is the, um, ah, the... is is the fact I'm using the mouse to interact with the dialogue and I'm using the mm, keys yeah, to yeah, interact yeah. with the environment and that that that's the only thing I would say it's a it's a minor quibble. Both things are fine and I'm I've been coping just fine. But you know I I, I it feels like I, I perhaps ought to be able to click on stuff or anyway. So yeah. Uh, yeah, or maybe you know, choose from the keys or something. But yeah, so I, I I think in terms of controls, it's it's good, reasonable set of smooth, usable controls. Um, let's look at the wine bottle. And <sighs> what mechanics do we have? Um, we have movement, dialogue. Yeah. Um, you know, the book open, close the book, talk to people. There's the uh, you you can and, maybe argue that the resource altering thing is is part of that. Um, yes. So, but yeah, it feels. Um, so the mechanics are consistent. Ah, oh, oh, father. Okay. I'm forced to clear up his mess. So, so the mechanics are, yeah. So what we have here is a. We don't have a lot of mechanics, but they are consistent. Yeah. Uh, I don't think there's enough of them to be complementary, so I think the mechanics have got to be um, satisfactory. Satisfactory, yeah. yeah. This is just... Oh. Oh. Uh, and let's see. I mean, yeah, that leads us to the game story engine. Yeah. So... This is interesting because it's it's so much of a narrative game that there's very little story engine in here, right? I'm gonna be a, a not here. Yeah, so <laughs> there is a, a lot of how the story wait. Yeah, how the story impacts the. Actually, so, wait, no. Uh, no, there's there's not it's because the because the story it's because the game engine is so light, right? Yeah. It's, there is a game engine, and it's down to the modelling of the the resources, right? Um, but then they're only used for the they're only really used for the narrative anyway. Um, there's there's not a lot of play here, right? It's it's an in, almost entirely narrative game. Um, yeah. So well, let's think of this. So if we've got examples of where the so examples of where the story impacts the game and the game impacts the story, right? Um, so where the story impacts the game, arguably, is where you make narrative decisions and then it alters the resources. Yeah. I do nothing. Um, <laughs> huh. um, okay, I'll talk to the farmer. Farmer, I think we should probably get some food. Let's see how we get on. All right. Um, so, so in terms of so there are there are examples when the narrative choices affect the game. the The problem is is that those variables don't actually affect anything else in the game world, right? They only affect the narrative. Yeah, they. Yeah, that's actually right. Yeah. Um. So, so I mean, arguably, there is no game world. <laughs> um, uh, you know, may, maybe the thing I'm looking at here, but that never changes. So the 
you know. Yeah, I, in a sense, it's like, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, links, not links, but like a web of uh, choices. Yeah. But, you, you know, it's like HTML or something. I don't remember the. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you could you, you could you could rewrite this as a basically as a hypertext. Um, ah, hi hypertext. Yeah, that's the word. Um, and it and it's and it's not adding anything else really. Um, so that's that's a problem. So I, so I think I think in terms of the the yeah, it's tricky. So. Yeah, as I said, the problem is that there is no game world really. Now it is worth saying this: this game is the the work of a single person. Um, so, yeah, yeah. so I think we we kind of when we look at those, we're always a bit mindful of that, and that the scope can be smaller. Um, but it feels to me that there that there needed to be a kind of a, a game element to this. To to you know, I needed to have some kind of objective. And then the narrative is trying to push me, um, you know, to, to to move in a particular direction with the, with my objectives within the game. Um, but there's no, mm. so so yeah, there's not even a thing where the food ticks down every day or something or every year, right? There's no, you know, you've, you, the, the resource management stuff is 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 really. Is so light it is just rendered as supporting the the, the, the narrative. Um, yeah, that's a that, that's a shame because it's like it, it works pretty well. But I think it's going to get pre. I think it's going to do quite well when we get to the agency part of it, where we're looking at the structure and the. Um, although the choices we've said are also a bit problematic, but um, so look, I think if we were generous here. Um, and as a single person game that, that that seems appropriate i think what we would say is that um so a, a pass for example for story engine would be sparse or minor examples of where the game world impacts the story right um whereas um uh, a kind of a poor would be some support for story elements but has no real impact on the story so I think if we were being generous, we would say that this was a, a pass, right? That there are sparse or minor examples where the game world impacts the story. Um, and yeah. Or or perhaps one way of it's even that though, isn't it? Because it really isn't very much. So so maybe maybe what we do is we say let's let's accept the fact that the that the the resources represent the game world, in which case, um, game world to story. Is actually pretty good, I think, but but maybe story well, to game. Oh well, no, they're both kind of. Yeah, they're some examples. Yeah, it's tricky. I okay. I think, as I said, we we should we should treat the resources as the game world, a very simple game world right but your interactions there are very minor so i would say that the the game world um so again okay i was about to say the game world impacts the story but the problem is the resources are the interface between the game world and the story right yeah. so while the story changes the variables and the variables impact the story there is no game world that's drawing on those variables in any way right um uh, yeah which makes I it mean, very tricky. you you could argue that no but that's narrative uh, you know because if you do different choices there's different yeah stuff happening but that's the narrative affecting the narrative yeah, the narrative exactly. affects the variables the variables then affect the narrative but the variables don't affect a game world right and yeah, actions exactly. in the game world so the, the only actions you take in the game world which affect the narrative is the order of which you interact with people. That's the only thing that happens in the game world, right? Mm -hmm. So and I don't think that does affect things. So the the you know your your prioritization, um, yeah, that's good. 
So I, I yeah, I'm I'm struggling a lot with this because there is essentially no no game element. Um, and what we normally do is to say when people want to do this is say look, you know, resource management is an obvious thing to to add in. Um, but uh, is there nothing else to do but go to bed? I wonder if can I just go to bed without interacting? Because that would be uh, no, no. You you have to talk to everyone. Because again, that would be an example. Um, oh, that's a. Sh I'm not sure if this dialogue has changed from last time. I said I hated my father this time, but it looks very similar. Okay, I'll just click through this bit because you've seen it before. Um, yeah, that's a shame because then because that would be an example of the ordering, right? If I chose just to go back to bed without doing anything, that's an example of the game world affecting the story. Um, but the that's the, actually yeah uh, the cool. actions I take in the game world. They. So one way to think about this then is they don't affect the the fabula what actually happens right but they affect the way in which the story is presented to me. So I would say that the the order of which I encounter things in the game world does affect the story but in very minor ways right. Yeah. So, so I I think that we've got that that makes it a pass right. So for game world to story because it's it yes it affects it but it doesn't really change the outcomes it just affects the way in which I encounter things. Mm -hmm. And the game world to story, does the story impact the game world? Um, I'm going to choose Shirley. Uh, he's going to say no. I've already decided. Yeah, there we go. So that's a false choice, which is nice. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, so story to game world. So that's that's really just through the, just through the resources. Uh, yeah, um, interface. So I, I think there is, I'm actually looking at it, I'm thinking that might be poor. There is some support for story elements, but the story has no real impact on the game world. The, the, this, this world here does not change at all, right? The world I'm wandering around in here, my interactions with it, and what I can do, pretty much nothing. Mm. Doesn't matter what's going on. Uh, it's not real. Don't believe it. <laughs> Man on YouTube told me. Uh, let's have a look over here. Okay. Let's re yeah, bread party. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Okay. And who's that person over here? The finest and watching lord. So yeah, so I, I, I think that's where we are. I think game world to story. We can say yes. There's a there's some minor examples because you can move about. Story to game world. And um, that's I'm um, unfortunately I think we have to make that make that a, a poor. Um, mm. yeah, uh, nah. I haven't looked at it. Uh, so mm, we can look now at the agency. Yeah. And the richness of structure. So, so the richness of structure. There, there does appear to be lots of places where I can make decisions. Um, I'm fiddling around with those those values, right? So, uh, you know, I'm beginning to to drop down a bit on some of them. Not that much, actually. So, I think we've got um, a number of branching points throughout the game, right? So that's sort of excellent, I think. Um, in terms of big choices, though, it's mainly about. I think you can lump the resource management into one one set and the, the relationship with your brother into the other set, possibly. But I still think that that counts as going through the whole the whole game. Mm, yeah. Quality of choices is a bit more interesting. Um, so you've got choices like, like this, where it clearly doesn't matter, right? Pretend <laughs> you can see it. That's fine. There's no problem with that. Um, the kind of bits about characterization. Um... The choices that I'm given, though, I think there was one choice where I went, "Oh, I don't know what to do," right? Yeah, the party. Other, otherwise, um, is this some kind of joke? Oh, yes, yes, get the gorilla. And oh, the now if a gorilla appears in the in the world, we can go back and reassess. Ah, uh, let's see what happens. Do it. You scream at the top of your lungs. Wow. Letter of resignation. 
Ooh. Oh, is he gone? The depletion of gold. You are forced to surrender your title. Oh, I'm dead. Wow. Oh, I'm done. Ah, okay. Oh. That's a shame. I wonder, I'm gonna, if I, hmm. Hmm. So my insistence on the 20 foot gorilla is a problem. Ha! <laughs> 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 ah, all right. I don't know whether we're going to try it too many more lines through this, but okay. So are we are we okay mm. for uh, structures? So we were talking about oh choices, weren't we? Yeah, choices. So, so, so there are well, one thing. Yeah. One thing that I think would have worked was, for example, the choice where you're talking to the alchemist. Yeah, and he asks, "Should I work on it or not?" And you know the obvious answer is yes, do it. And yeah. the other answer is no, don't. So that's not really, you know, a meaningful choice because no. the the logical thing is to yeah work on it. Yeah. The, it the, would the, have been a yeah. nice choice if it was like, "Should I work on that or something else, else?" That's yeah. so, you know yeah. bothering the people. So, so you, know. you know, the obvious one is it's an alchemist, right? Shall I work on my my experiments on turning lead into gold are progressing very well, sire? Um, shall I work on that or shall I stop doing it to work on a cure? Exactly. Yeah. And you're like, no, work on that. And then if he works on that, you start getting extra gold, right? It's exactly. Like, yeah. It's like with the farmer. The reason that was a meaningful choice is it's like I had a choice between putting my food up and making the people happy. Right. Um, um, so you know that, that that so that's a problem, I think. But there are occasions where it is an interesting choice. So, for example, um, uh, that you know that that exact choice there with the farmer. The one at the end with your brother is interesting because I I wonder whether you could choose not to help your brother, I suppose, out of spite. Um, <laughs> So arguably, it's it's a more interesting choice, and I also suspect that we that if you that you can't necessarily help him if you don't have the right resources, right? So so I think I think what we have here are some interesting choices, right? And again, if we yeah. if we're kind of generous and we say look, there's there's it's sort of it's sort of one and a half interesting choices we've spotted so far. Um, uh, mm, yeah, is that such yeah. a great no. Save the money. Okay. Yeah. All right. So where does that take us next? Uh, poetics and the mm. narrative and gameplay. So the, the 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 themes of the story. So so actually, actually this I think is a bit better, isn't it? Because this is all about preparing for the future. Um, yeah. And what I'm trying to do is to manage that set of variables, right? Um, what I'm actually doing is. In order to do that, is wandering around talking to people. Um, so you know that's that's um, that. It would be nice if there's a bit more, a bit more, bit more to do than that, I suppose. Um, but the the themes are coherent, right? Um, so I think I think uh, satisfactory would be narrative and gameplay do not interfere. Good would be narrative and gameplay complement each other. An excellent will be narrative and gameplay support one another, and I and I think that it feels to me like it, it's um, again the problem is that it's the gameplay, right? Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I suppose you are still playing you're playing the game through the narrative, um, so I think I think it's probably probably good that they complement one another, but I think the problem is they're not rich enough to to, to add much additional support, which would be the excellent. So I think poetics is probably good. Mm, yeah. Um, uh, I think that's fair, um, and we have now <clears throat> pacing and techniques. Yes. Pacing. Uh, so, it, obviously, events happen <laughs> as you go through. So, you get your brother introduced, and then there's a there's a kind of a a, 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 a kind of a the climax at the end, except it's not really a climax. It, it's more of a denouement, right? It's kind of telling you what happened as a result of, of what, you, you know, you, you, the, the climax is kind of hidden for you. The climax would be a sequence of very difficult choices about exactly how you navigate through this for you and your kingdom. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Do nothing about the Black Death. 
There we go. I think you'll find it's being called the Black Death by the mainstream media. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's what it is. Um, the newspapers. Yeah, we can all take... What I, sort I can't even remember mail. what some of the things are called. Ivermectin, is it, that they go on about? Anyway, yeah, we should just take that be fine. Yeah. I hope that, bud. Pleasure to be meeting you. Um, uh, oh. Yep. Bag of berries. Oh, I'm back at the army. Oh, come on. <laughs> yum, yum. Um, so, yeah, so in terms yeah. of pacing, it feels to me like some stuff happens, so arguably there's some ascending pacing. Um, and, and as, as the events occur, but I don't think there's a clear peak, and I and I think it, it, even that's maybe a little bit shaky. But as I said, if we feel like it could be there, let's 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 go for that. So that's kind of a satisfactory level, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and the next one was techniques used. So this is quite nice. You've got like a little bit in I, I, the flashback stuff. It's not not quite. That's sort of easy in media res, I suppose. But it's there's flashbacks. You've got a, a scripted sequence that happens in the middle. You've got dialogue. So I think this is quite strong, actually. Um, yeah, the, there's definitely use of more than one game yeah. writing technique. And, and I think it's appropriate and consistent use. You know, that the... Um, normally, I would say I'd, I'd want to see it used more than once for a similar sort of thing in order to say it's consistent but because this is a work of a single person and therefore the scope's smaller i think that using it once um, for a special yeah. type of thing is fine so actually i would say the techniques is excellent i, I, I think they've done a nice job yeah and yeah, I, I think that leads us to feedback so what do they say uh, let's see uh, the feedback i received was on a version of the game that leaned more heavily on the food goat and well-being attributes for narrative branches yeah uh, the criticism was that the game added another go mechanic that separated it further from the original fable inspiration to address this i changed every important tail decision to be that of the ant hardworking cautious or of the grasshopper, lazy, not cautious, yeah. in the fable, uh, which involved rewriting the narrative. At this stage, every important decision in the game is obviously one or the other. Yeah. So they made it clearer. They made the, from man managing resources and having, you know, to look at the resources. They made it very clear that you're making a choice yeah. and. And and that's I think all the feedback. So I think they've been partially successful, right? Because I think I think that 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 has linked the narrative choices more firmly with the theme of the game and with the resource management aspect of the game. But also, it's led them to make a whole series. Of, it's exactly what we we're just complaining about, right? These choices, which are meaningless choices. It's like, do you want to do this obviously sensible thing or do you want to be an idiot? Right? And it's like, well, okay. <laughs> Whereas, uh, you know, what what they should have been doing is probably short term versus long term, right? So it's it's kind of, you know, if 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 we don't release some of our grain, if we, you know, so we've got grain in the in the granary, um, we have seeds in the granary, right? We can sow them for next year or we can grind them up to make seed bread, yeah. Um, and if you if you don't make the seed bread, some of your people will die this year, right? They'll starve. So happiness will go down. But if you keep it, then next year, right, we'll have a much bigger crop, right? And it's mm. it's it's that, and it's so you need to be prepared to make the hard decisions in order to think about the longer term, yeah. And I think they've that's what they've failed to to kind of get across. So for me, um, I would say. It's, it's, it's a bit more than limited success. I would say that they've been somewhat successful in connecting them together, but I wouldn't think they've quite gone the full way. So, so I think the feedback is probably satisfactory. Satisfactory, yeah. 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 Right. As much as I'd like to go through, unfortunately, getting kicked out of my barony for for buying an enormous <laughs> gorilla has cost us the second run. Trip. Yeah. So, um, I have to say, I mean, still, still, still really nice. I, th I think that, um, yeah, there, there needed to be. A, Making those decisions more balanced in that way would have gone a long way, I think, to to fixing the problems here. 
but the infrastructure of this game is really nice. I like I like the narrative setup, and I think the use of techniques was was really was really lovely. Um, mm, yeah. Shall we move on to our next game? Yeah. Right. So for our last game, um, I am joined by Tom. Hello. Um, yeah. So this is Life of a Teenage Block, uh, and I believe this game was made uh, by just one person. So we're going to be taking that into account as we're uh, as we're marking it. Absolutely. Let's get into it. So we've got a nice menu screen. Yeah. Uh, uh, little animation. Like it. Okay. Let's let's play the game and see what happens. Okay, loading. It's loading for a while. I wonder what it's loading. Ah, thanks for dinner, Mum. That was really nice. Oh, we've got some diegetic okay. audio. That's kind of cute. That's nice. Yeah, I like the little animations. That's cute, isn't it? Uh, thanks for. Uh, our name is Oblong, I guess. Thanks for dinner, Mum. Ah. That was really nice. I was I was just looking for us in the scene. I've just realised we're the white square. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, it's your grandparents' anniversary, and they are coming to us for dinner. Uh, okay. Yes, I know. Right. Uh, Still have a lot to do to prepare. Okay, already getting hints of perhaps what fable this is based okay. off. Uh, I'm going to work okay. first thing tomorrow, and I won't be home until around 6 p.m. It's really important you step up and finish what needs to be done. Brilliant. All so right. we've got a list of things on the table. Got to finish them all by 6, I assume. Uh, no computer games until everything is done. <laughs> yes. <laughs> who, who would waste their time playing games? No. Uh, Please try and get to sleep before 10. Don't forget to set your alarm. Okay. You need it. Little uh, integrated tutorial as well. Uh, okay, although, so I'm not sure what where? the symbols on the right are. So we've got times if I press B. Oh, it's my phone. And that tells ah. us the time, I guess. I don't know if I can. Can I? Ooh. You can. Uh... <laughs> if I got. Tinder for cubes. <laughs> yeah, that's that's swipe, a very swipe cute. Left. Uh, I think. Right, oh, okay. hang on. So let me. I think I just wasted a lot of time doing that. Uh, quick. Oh, is it okay? So you can come in here. So we're supposed to do chores, right? Uh, I think we're we're supposed to go to bed by ten, and then then do chores tomorrow. Okay. Perhaps. So. Uh, Go. Oh yeah, better go straight in there then. Sleep, play game, set alarm. Oh, set the alarm first then. Controls are a little bit weird. X, Z, and V. So did you set the alarm then? Yes, I think so. Oh. Was there any feedback to say that you'd set the alarm? I think the 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 sprite of the clock might have changed. I'm not sure. Okay. There we go. Good morning. It's morning already. I wonder what time it is. I can use my phone to check the time or make calls by clicking the phone. Okay, oh, there we are. Uh, I probably I should, should probably have, have okay. looked at that at some point. I thought yeah. I'd look at it in the morning, all right? Relax, it's fine. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, kitchen table, list of chores, dun dun dun. Pick up list of chores. Uh, ah, C. You can see it. That's quite cute. Order anniversary cake, call early so they have time to deliver. Mark the floor, bring in some flowers from outside, place. Okay, so let's make so, the so call. 2253. 2253. 2253. Hello, this is cake. Block cake. <laughs> uh, I can help you. So you can get delivery to take roughly two hours. Don't miss it. Okay. Uh, I've already All forgotten right. everything else we were supposed to do. Um, something about mopping the floor, right? Uh, uh, yeah. We, uh, oh, you can tick. Can you tick it off? Can you tick it? Well, it's not arrived yet, so I don't think it gets to. Uh, yeah. Uh, mop the floor. Mop the floor. Let's mop. Well, the floor. There's, there's the mop. Uh, pick up mop. The mop. Oh, that's kind of cute. I like that. <laughs> that's actually really nice. Uh, yeah, that's good. Uh, okay. There you go. So okay, I've got about two hours before a cake shows up. So I have to. Um, why would I not mop the floor? Why Why would we go and play video games instead? Do you mean? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Well, I'll perhaps I'll do that in our next playthrough and see if pl playing video games is more fun than mopping the floor. There we go. I guess automatically uh, ticked off. Bring in some flowers from outside and place them in a vase. 
and remember to be ready for the delivery. Oh, is that the delivery? That's the delivery right there. Expertly timed. Uh... <laughs> uh, that's quite a cute little animation, actually. Collect. There you go, got that. And go, go and get those flowers. Uh, ah, so this opens automatically, but it doesn't close automatically. Uh, oh, I can't go out the front door to get the flowers. I've got to go out the back door. I guess that makes some that makes sense. sense. Uh, flowers, 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 flowers. I, <laughs> I feel like I'm ru good. ruining Mum's garden a bit here. Uh, yeah, you've definitely done a certain amount of damage there, haven't you? Um, and uh, stick them on the table, was it? Flowers placed. Flowers placed. That's all my chores done. Now and the lounge can... vases. Okay. I have time to play some games. Oh, I can. Or to, or to look around for Mum. Okay. Oh, that's. I, I really like that. I can, again, like diegetic audio. I get to change or turn off the music. Yeah, it's cute. And you can go up to your room and play some games for a bit. Yeah, what time is it? So we've got four four hours? Perfect. That's ages. Ages. Uh, heli block. Heli, heli block. Play. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Go for it. Oh. <laughs> oh. It's, it's Flappy Bird, isn't it? It is a bit. Although, weirdly, more unforgiving than Flappy Bird. <laughs> yeah. uh, I kind of I, I appreciate the attention to detail of putting a game within a game. A game's the thing. And and a very nice choice of game as well. Very simple but effective. I will be honest, I had more fun mopping the floor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> funny it were like that in real life. Uh, so, okay, so what are we doing now? Can you exit? I think we're just waiting for mum to come home. Uh, I don't know how I exit actually, that's a good question, there we go. Um, no. Time is it. Yeah, it's still got two, two more hours of playing Heli Blockter. Two more hours? Or, I mean, we'll, we'll see if we've got any, any matches on blocked, Blockter. Okay. Uh, what happens if you try and call somebody else? I, I don't know any other numbers. Um, 999? 111? <laughs> nope. No. No. Uh, We've got an hour left. Okay. Let me go downstairs, see what's going on. Oh, someone's arrived, are they? V? No, no that's, that's just the phone. Although, I an the phone. Isn't that okay. a little, that's a little car there, isn't it? it? I think it's just parked outside. Two, eight, nine, two. Uh, what was that? I, there, I've got a debug error in the bottom left that's three, three uh, or other four numbers, so I figured I'd try ringing it and see if anything happens. <laughs> Very meta. Oh, it's the TV. Can we turn the TV on? Uh, I think Mum's oh, just got home. Mom. There we go. I'm home. How did you get on? Uh, you got the cake in time. They will love it. Okay. You brought the flowers in. They look lovely. There you go. Marvellous. It was a pretty grimy floor. Uh, you've done everything I asked. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, there's your grandparents. Very, they have uh, very small cars. Yeah. Considering the size of the sofa. Oh. Okay. That's it. The end. Oh, and a nice little um. Of you, of you having having cake, cake, cake with the grandparents. <laughs> there's the beach cake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very cute. Okay, so that's interesting. So. Life of a teenage block. Um, I'm now about to play eight hours of uh, Heli Blockter, so let, let's start talking about the mark scheme. <laughs> let's go for it. All right. So first up is presentation, um, and that's uh, graphics and audio and information design. Um, graphics are quite cute, actually. Yeah, um, I, I always say um, in all the lectures, like you know, you can you can do a lot with very very simple shapes and things like that. And yep. a square is a very simple shape, and they've done a lot with they've it. Done like it. It's... Yeah, yeah, very nice. Yeah, works really nicely. Um, I also like the fact that the that this game is a slightly different style than the than the rest of the game. So you're aware you're in a different space. Yes. Um, they've kept the block motif, but it, here it's all blocky. Whereas in the rest of the world, you know, you are the block, and everything else is simple pixel graphics. So I like the graphics. I think they're really nice. Um, I, I mean, good is consistent and effective. I would, um, I would go beyond that. I would say they're appealing as well. Yeah, which which takes it up to excellent. I, I'd agree with you. I think. Um, yeah, very, very, very nice. Um, so audio. So we had the diegetic music that was quite cute. Do we have any um, sound effects? Sound effects. 
I'm gonna go turn off the uh, audio and see if anything changes. What time is it? It's we've still got ages. Uh, what happens if you hit things on the phone? Does the keypad make a sound or anything? Or so there are some effects, like the it makes a noise when the door opens and closes, and things like that. Okay. Like, mum, mum's gonna get really annoyed at me because I'm just standing here slamming a door open and shut. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, let's see what happens if I press buttons. On so. The Okay, no, no sound effects okay. there, but otherwise. So, so a little bit sparse on the sound effects. Um, I mean, I think that's one if I set an alarm as well. Um, I was going to not set an alarm to see what happened, but uh, yeah, it goes from flashing to solid, I think, and it gives us a little. No, it doesn't beep. I could have sworn it beeped. Mm. So, so good would be complementary audio effects and music, and satisfactory would be some audio effects and music. Um, I would say that the music is complimentary, but the sound effects are a bit sparse. Yeah, which is so, a shame. So maybe halfway between the two for for audio. Um, information design. So so the key bit of information, I guess, in this the entirety of the game is the time. Um, so you've got the time on your phone. You've also got the tasks and whether they're ticked off or not. That's there. yes. Um, you've also got, you know, which bits of the floor you, have you mopped, kind of a thing. Um, that's that's part of yeah. the information design as well. I, it is. And, and uh, you've got like, kind of even like just the, in, even like the music coming out of there yeah. just to indicate that it's an interactive element. Can you go to the loo? And oh, there's uh, a, and speaking of all, all of the um, you know the button prompts and stuff showing you what you need to press to interact with different mm. things, showing up contextually is quite nice as well. I think you've just fallen asleep in the toilet. I oh, have. It's a shame you can't go outside and steal your mum's car. <laughs> um, have a, sort of a Ferris Bueller's Day Off type experience. Yeah. Um, this, this is kind of Ferris Bueller's Day at home, isn't it? It is a bit. So there's... Oh, there's my list of tasks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, in terms of information design, good would be all key information is shown. Um, prize worthy would be novel yet clear ways of showing information. Um, and they got some nice stuff. I quite like. I quite like things like the to do list being ticked off and that being sort of an item and things. Yeah. Um, um, so, do we do we think excellent? Do we think maybe? I, Part part yeah. of the way to prize worthy, or do we think? I I think this it's, it's probably the com the complexity is probably not quite enough for yeah I think like prize worthy. But, but I but I think I'm happy to go for excellent. I think they've done a really nice job. I think so. Um, so that takes us on to meaningful play. So this is about the mechanics, the controls, bugs. Um, it's a reasonably complex game in terms of what you can do, particularly when you add in this little game here as well. Yeah, and again, um, particularly and considering that it was just one one person working on it like there's yes. a number of different bits and pieces to do like, like overall like yeah it's a very simple game but in terms of we asked for a small yeah. little prototype uh, so i and, and no obvious bugs i don't think so yeah. so i think that's an excellent um mechanics and controls so what are the mechanics you've got going on you've got to obviously walk around you can interact with things you've got this little game where you got them down um, um, like mopping the floor and picking the flowers are somewhat similar in that you walk over stuff and you get uh, yeah. it affects affects you the game. Dialing on the phone. Yeah. Um, I think that's about it. But that's a it's a reasonable set of things. Yeah. So it's, good would be a set of complementary mechanics. I don't. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'd say it's a wide set still. No, I I, I think probably but probably probably good. Yeah. Um, and then. Controls. So, are you've got a set of usable controls? Are they are they smooth? Are they intuitive? Kind of. What do you think? Um, yeah, I perhaps some confusion why we've got four different buttons to interact with things. Yeah, I think that's let them down a little bit. It feels to me like you should just have an interact button. Yeah. Right. So, um, the, like the only other one is Z, I think, and that's to like pick up the. Yeah. Um, to pick up the list, but, I think, and that might be it. Um, but it still works well. It, to me, that just is the reason it's not intuitive, right? Yeah. So, so I, I would say we still have a good oh, no, there we go. the so controls. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. So that takes us on to the story. 
Um, and what we asked them to do was to have this story engine where the game world affects the story and the story affects the game world. So it, it, it feels to me like game world to story, which I guess we're about to find out, right? Um, game world to story does have a have a, an effect, presumably. Yes. Because if you don't get the sleep, if you don't do the tasks, then you get different stuff happens, you get different outcomes. And we haven't quite got there yet, but I'm guessing that's where we're going. Yeah? Yes. Um, story to gameplay. Yes. Uh, again, because it is quite kind of such a small prototype in such a small space, yes. the, the story doesn't evolve enough to have an effect on the gameplay. No, there's there's almost nothing. I'm trying to think what does happen. So you do have certain narrative events that get triggered, like the cake gets delivered, right? That's true, actually. Yeah. So that's that. So you know, if if you if you do that if you do that action, then then the cake is delivered and and you see it and you can interact with it. Um. In, so I didn't leave the cake outside. I never ordered the cake. Ah. So okay. that's a small so, small bug. So maybe we need to, um, for the bugs, we just need to bring that down to kind of... Say, sort of minor minor errors. Um, and the cake's disappeared, but the flower's in the background. Okay, interesting. So the file pot's empty, the cake's disappeared, so it kind of keeps track of it there. It's just that one line of dialogue that's... Uh... Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, okay, so we were, we were talking about the story engine. So, all right, so, so I think the story to game world is, is, is the more difficult one. Um, game world to story... Um, so uh, good would be a number of examples where the game world impacts the story in important ways and excellent would be a consistent interplay between the game world and story i don't think we're there but i think we're probably at good a number of examples where the game world impacts the story that feels yeah i that think that's right that sounds about right um so the problem as we said is the other way around so the problem is is where we get um the story impacts the game world. So the story gets to a state where you order the cake. If you don't order the cake, the cake doesn't turn up. If you do, it does turn up. I don't think there's anything else. I mean, you, you could argue that mopping the floor leaves the floor clean. That's <laughs> tenuous at best. But, um, but really, because that's a mechanical action, I don't think we can count that. Yeah, it's like so the, I, I, yeah. the progression um, of the story is mostly dictated by time and... Yes. The, not, basically, yeah. the key story events happen after the gameplay is finished as a result of the gameplay finishing. So there yes. isn't, it can't it's really just, affect the gameplay. No. no. So so we've got a pass would be sparse or minor examples. Bear in mind that we've got the cake, and that's about it. Do, I don't suppose they mention in their game notes what, what they consider um, has had the effect. So they, they uh, how did the narrative impact the game world? Um, so exposition is delivered by exposition is delivered by the characters, which serve to guide the player through the stages, starting at the dinner table. Uh, this includes a nod towards the core mechanics of the game. Time, the, the player is informed. So this is just a description of the narrative, rather than actually saying. Let me let me scan this. How does the narrative impact the game world? Um, uh, the player's actions during the rest of the, the player's actions during the rest of the night dictate what's. So this is an overview of the game. Okay, in the morning, so... they're used to their phone, they receive a chore list. Each task has a visual impact on the game world as the player works through them. Right, there you go, that's what they think. So they think as you complete the tasks, you can see it happening in the game world. But so that's, so they've, that's yeah, game, game so affecting they've, game, really. That's game affecting game. Or, well, even yeah, then, it's so, game affecting story, I yeah. guess, arguably, but. So that's a, that's, a good, that's a good example of how you can write a very long paragraph to answer a question. But it doesn't actually answer the question because the game doesn't really do it. Um, so I, I think if we if we look at the mark scheme, so a, a pass is sparse or minor examples where the game world impacts the story. Um, poor is some support for story elements of the game, but the game world has no real impact on the story. 
Um, I would maybe put them halfway between them because they've got this one one single example when the cake yes. turns up. Like, I mean, their, yeah. their story engine is clearly capable of doing it because events get triggered at certain times, but they haven't made yeah. they, they, they haven't made more use of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that takes us on um, to uh, the the next bit, which is to do with the agency. Yep. So the structure um, and the uh, the interestingness of the choices. Of the choices. So uh, yeah. So the structure is interesting. They they've got a they've got a, a nice flow chart of the, on their game notes. Um, so uh, yeah. Essentially, that has a number of outcomes where you set the alarm. So after dinner, you can either set your alarm, play games, or go to bed early. Right, and depending on the combination of things you do, you wake at different times, basically. Yeah, which I think um, is a nice a nice way of uh, doing that. Actually. Yeah, is that an example of the story effect in the game world? Uh, I'm, I would say no, because again, it's your actions within the game that affect. Yeah, they're just motivated by the story. Yeah, it's it's tricky, isn't it? Um, and then you go to the chores, so you pick up your chore list and do your chores or you play games, it gets to 6pm, then you have a conversation with mother, which varies according, as you said, according to the things you've done, and then it ends. Right. I've got to say, so, that, that first branching the, point I kind of like, because it's not a, here is the choice, here is the branch, it's yeah, you do a number yeah. of different actions and then the combination yeah. of that affects yeah. what happens next. So so their argument is that you, you effectively have um, you effectively have a choice after dinner as to whether you go to bed or not, right? Um, you have a choice as to whether you set the alarm or not. And then you have a choice to complete any of the tasks or not, right? Um, and the cake is a bit more com complicated because you can get it delivered but not collect it, or you can have it delivered and collect it, or you can not not get it delivered. So, so I, so, I yeah. would say that they are branching points. Yeah, calling them choices might be a bit of a stretch. That's yes. like saying well, you have the well, choice to play a game or not. Yeah. I could just so, quit so now, think, and that's a choice. So I think you're right. So I think in terms of you know, in the agency section, there's broken into two bits, right? So one is the structure, one is the choices. So if you think about the choices, actually, we do have a number of branching points, right? Um, the the consequences are, are at the end, but they are mostly throughout the game. I think. Um, you know, you've got yeah, they are, aren't they? You've got the dinner table choice, you've got the alarm, then you've got the chores to do them or not. You know, they they are effectively spread through the game. Which bits of these things you're going to do? Um, so you could argue that the structure is pretty rich, actually, um, and that it's, it's at least a good and arguably is up at the excellent level. A number of branching points throughout the game. Hmm. Sorry, I'm just struggling with these flowers at the minute. Uh, um, but yeah. I think the problem is then the problem is then the quality, as you said. Um, so, what do, what do you think about the the quality of the choices? Then you started to say a bit about that. Um, so, it's almost partly down to the the time limit and also the alternative choice. So, so basically, the the game revolves around: do you do the chores or not? Yes. And kind of, so part of the problem with making a game based on this particular fable, which I believe is the ants and the grasshopper, is you know do do, yeah. you, do you work hard, or do you just have fun in, and don't prepare for the important yeah. event? Uh, and in a game, it's very difficult to make the working hard f yeah. as like uh, so what am, what am I trying to say like. The, I, I found doing the chores and all of the hard work more fun than being lazy yes. and playing the helicopter game. So so the, I, one of the things I like about what they've done is I was worried that when you went to play games, you would just sit there and it would say, you play games for an hour. Right? Yeah, it's, yes. The, because if they'd have done that, it's like there is no choice at all, right? Why on earth would I do that when I can just get on and do stuff? At least by making it a game, you, you actually have a, have a choice. Like, but the... so the way I would have maybe got around this is have your, you know, your friend phones you up and says, yes. "Aha, I beat your high score on that thing. I bet you can't beat mine." 
yes. by the yeah. big tournament at six and, o'clock. And that or would whatever. make it that would make it more of an incentive, right? Yeah. I I think I think and, and actually that last bit is important. I think the problem is it's about goals, right? Interesting choices are when you have conflicting goals. And the problem with just bum around and play a game for a bit is that's not a goal, right? So when you're when you're playing a game and you're being goal orientated, you just won't do it. I think the key thing to what you just said is your friend says, um, "Don't forget the games tournament today. Highest score by six o'clock wins a thousand dollars or something, right?" Yeah. Um, and then it's like, ah, now I've got conflicting goals. I need to get a high score on the game and I need to do my chores. And now it's so much more interesting. Right. However, that um, that again it would still kind of undermined by the fact that we we've got so much time to do all of these different things. Like it's yes, quite easy to true. get a high score and do well, all the chores. Well, well, yes and no because I think the the thing about the high score is that you actually have to do quite well at the game. Yeah, you right? can you can make that score as high so, as you like, I guess, to try and balance it out. So. So you could you could do you could also intervene, right? You could have a second phone call from your friend. So if you play the game and get a get a decent score, you could get a second phone call from your friend saying, "Oh no, I've just checked out the high scores, and it turns out that that you know so and so's got you know a, a, just a little bit more than you or something." So so I think that with the mechanisms they've got, they could have made that much better, and then it would make these choices actually make sense. Without that in there it's not it's not completely defunct because at least you get the pleasure of playing an actual game yeah but it's it's still not really a choice the, like there's there's no reason not to set your alarm for example it's not a choice it's a, a very obvious calculation which is a good thing will happen if i yeah. do this and a bad yeah. thing will happen if i don't yeah yeah so so okay so in terms of quality of choices a pass would say that there are few interesting choices poor would be few interesting choices player agency is problematic right um i don't think your agency is problematic i think you can choose to do things and the game reacts fine i just think you've got a few interesting choices so for me it's probably a pass yes i think you're probably right i just just for the sake of yeah no, no, no i think yeah i think that's pretty much where it stands um, so that takes us on to um, the design elements, so the poetics. So this is about the gameplay and the story and whether they complement one another. right? So the story, as you said, is all about preparing. Um, so in this case, so, you are preparing you're directly. It's, it's, it's absolutely about the story. So um, much like the what we were just saying about the, the interestingness of the choices, like... The, the mechanics themselves, or rather the way the mechanics are set up, yeah, fundamentally support the theme because it's do you do the important thing or do you fail yeah. to do the important thing? It's undermined yeah. slightly by the fact that, again, we, there's no yeah. reason not to do the important thing. Yes. But you can but see it, it, they've it's... clearly set that up so yeah. that there are these options open to you. Yeah. So, so, narrative, so good would be narrative and gameplay complement one another. And narrative and, and excellent would be they support one another and the mechanics emphasize the themes of the story. Um, it feels like we might be almost there. I think so. I think it depends how much you take into account that they, they haven't quite executed the reason not to do it, right? I think that's maybe what stops them from being all the way and excellent. But 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 I think, you know, halfway between the two, and, and they, they had a really good idea. I think they, you know, um, and, and this is almost like the hardest bit of the mark scheme to get right. Yeah. You know? And they and they have got it. Uh. It's just they haven't quite... Um, pulled it off um and and that might be an artifact of just being an individual person yeah um but uh, yeah they they are they are on the way there so yeah good yeah, although um, unfortunately another bug for the pile i can't uh, put put the flowers in the vase unfortunately which oh is, dear. which ruins my perfect ending but oh well <laughs> um so um and then techniques pacing and and game writing techniques so um, we've techniques wise we've got the i guess the the sort of in-game events like that the um you know the doorbell ringing the thing the thing being dropped off uh we've got the dialogue um with our mother we've got the dialogue with the uh the cake shop we've got arguably the the sort of uh, little epilogue sequence where we get 
yeah. a, a lovely picture that references yeah. events from the game. So whether the flowers are present, whether the cake is present, yeah. changes yeah. based on... Uh... I, I mean, I think they've done quite a nice job, really. Yeah. Um, excellent would be appropriate and consistent use of more than one game writing technique. Um, and prize worthy would be sophisticated and novel. I don't think it's novel. I... It's it's certainly appropriate and consistent. Uh, so, yes, yeah. I think the the primary technique they're using is the, you know the dialogue um, between the characters. Yeah. The other stuff is maybe utilized slightly less. So I don't know if it'd be all the way at excellent or between a good and excellent. What do, what well, do you think? Do the, you think it reaches? The, the key thing about that is whether it's consistent. Um, so. Um, you could argue that that actually there's a lack of consistency because the the the, the cutscene at the beginning is done as a scripted event, um, and then this cutscene at the end is done as a uh, as a sorry the the narrative bit at the end is done as a cutscene. Um, so that's that's kind of like a bit a bit odd if you like, um, but they're they're used well they're used appropriately, right? Um, so uh, and I think. I think um, again, part of the problem is scope because it's quite a small game. There's not the opportunity to show it off. So perhaps for that reason, we should we should leave it at the excellent level. Okay. Yeah, that's fair enough. Um, the pacing. So. Hmm. So. In. So any game that has a sort of time limit in it kind of inherently has some sort of ascendant pacing yeah however the time limit in this is so long it you never really mm. feel that sort of pressure either mechanically no. or narratively it's not like well, a, well also, i've only got an also, hour left to what what they should be doing is they should be doing other things to increase the pressure so just just for an example someone should come to the door halfway through the afternoon right or get a phone call, or uh, or you get a phone call, yeah, like, or something. Like, like mum like, says, oh, I, I need you to also do this other thing. Yeah, I mean, and, and actually, you know, this, that's what that the phone call from your friend would have one done very well, right? Because not only does it occur and suddenly you've got much less time than you thought, all right, but also it's putting the pressure on you to, to do well in the game. So so I I think that yeah they've missed a bit of a trick I think with the, with with that. Um, so. <sighs> Satisfactory would be some ascending pacing, and uh, pass would be pacing is unclear or flat, right? Um, and I think, yeah, they, they, yeah, yes. If it wasn't for the time, it would be unclear or flat. Right? Yes, yeah. just, it's just flat. Um, the time arguably lifts it up a bit, but I think only just because because there isn't enough of like let's say um, sort of compounding pressure. Yeah, uh, either mechanically or narratively. So that that takes us through to feedback. Okay. Um, so this is quite brief. They said they never attended a feedback session, which is a shame. Um, so they got other people to test it, and the overwhelming change was to actually include things for the player to do that weren't chores, so they had a reason to ignore the tasks. The primary one is a classic mini game that entices players to keep playing and increase their high score. So. Um, despite the fact they didn't, I, I was worried then. I thought because normally when you do playtesting, you you get very very sort of simplistic feedback. You know, I didn't know what this was. Um, there's no sound effect for this or something. But in this case, I think the feedback's actually pretty good. Um, that they're trying to take. You know, it's about the choices. It's about trying to make the choices more interesting. I will also, um, and as a direct result, they added this mini game. I'll also just interject and say, although we have, you know, a designated feedback session to provide feedback for these reasons, we yeah. we, we also have a, an entire Discord server set up. We are available yep. by email. You can you can always get feedback on your game from us if you ask us. Yes, yeah, that's true. So I think I think they got lucky, right, and that they got a, a decent piece of feedback from the playtesters. Um, and and I think it's worked. Um. So, I mean, uh, a good would be feedback has been addressed and the changes have been successful. Um, yeah. A satisfactory would be feedback was addressed and the changes have been somewhat successful. So, I, given all what we've been talked about, right, that the, what they've done to introduce the mini game has been partial has has been somewhat successful, right? 
it, it kind of it kind of leads you to do something else but isn't quite where it needs to be yeah so so actually because it hasn't quite fully worked i, I think it would be a satisfactory i think so yeah that seems pretty pretty on the money okay um but a, a nice little game and again with all the mechanics that are in already you could you could just by adding a few extra events and 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 tweaking the goals that people had uh you you could make this into a really nice little um a nice little uh fun fun you know 10 minute game um okay i think that's our last one okay uh in which case we'll we'll see you again for another video soon thanks for watching